Compare and contrast Kittle and Vernon Davis. You're just giving me like a, you're just interviewing me right now. I love it. Compare and contrast Kittle and Vernon Davis based on what you have seen in training camp. Okay. Okay. Um, people don't remember this about Vernon Davis. He was an amazing blocker. He was an amazing blocker. He was stronger than George Kittle. That's true. In terms of just pushing someone in front of him, Vernon was better. Now, Kittle's great too. And Kittle is amazing, like down the field. He's so smart. He knows who to pick up. I'm not sure Vernon Davis was that great of a downfield blocker, but just pushing people in front of him, Vernon Davis had freak strength, freak strength. And then his speed, that 4-3 speed, even Kittle can't match that. I mean, I've never seen a downfield threat like Vernon Davis. Now, Kittle's a better route runner. He's a he's um, better at catching the ball. Vernon Davis would do that little hop when he caught the ball for no reason, which would limit his ability to get yards after the catch because he was like hurtling when he caught the ball. Um, and as much of like a train Vernon Davis could be, I, I think George Kittle's even better at um, breaking tackles and running after the catch. But the, what I, the way I see the difference between them is Vernon Davis played for Mike Singletary, Jimmy Ray, Mike Nolan, you know, Greg Roman. Greg Roman's bright idea, his, his grand scheme for Vernon Davis was to use him as a decoy the entire regular season, 2011, 2012, and then unveil him in the playoffs when no one's expecting it. Like, dude, imagine if Vernon Davis had played for someone like Andy Reid or Bruce Arians, or Kyle Shanahan. I mean, he was already scoring like 10, 11, 12 touchdowns a year for awful coordinators. I think Vernon Davis's career could have been way better. I mean, I mean he played with Alex Smith, an awful coordinator. Nothing against Alex Smith. But what if he had been on Dallas playing with Tony Romo or, or in Green Bay? Imagine if he was in Green, Bla- Green Bay playing with Aaron Rodgers in his prime. If it was Vernon Davis instead of Jermichael Finley. Vernon Davis's career, no one remembers it. And I, he, the Niners like don't play him up. They love Frank Gore. Vernon Davis, I don't even think was ever a captain for that team. It's it's I don't get that. What did he do? He was a little bit of an odd duck, but so what? I know everyone loves George Kittle, and rightfully so, but Vernon Davis made one of the biggest catches in team history. Let's not forget the original number 85. They're not going to re- retire his number. They gave it to George Kittle. They're going to retire Kittle's number. 49ers fans are going to forget about Vernon Davis. He's going to fall through the cracks of Niners history. But he made the catch three. He beat the Saints. I was there. It was one of the most impressive victories ever. That I mean, it was a great playoff game. He won it. I don't see what he... I mean, the Niners drafted him top 10, and I think he did everything you would want a top 10 pick to be. He was always in shape. He was a team guy. After Mike Singletary put him in uh, in his place and helped him grow up, he never complained when he would get no target. Remember that game in Seattle? He got zero targets. He was a good player, a great 49er, and he no one remembers him. He, he got edited out of 49ers history, and I think it's weird. Jed Dunn retiring numbers. Yeah. Is he going to retire Justin Smith, Patrick Willis? They should retire Patrick Willis. He's one of the greatest 49ers of all time. That guy gave the Niners, what, nine years? Nine great years? Got to retire Patrick Willis' number. I love these questions. I remember Vernon Davis. I remember Vernon Davis. I remember Vernon Davis. It's like in Fight Club. His name is Robert Paulson. His name was Vernon Davis. His name was Vernon Davis.